We are at the tip top of Texas. It was one of our tougher hikes, but it was worth it for the view. It's four miles basically straight up. I, it's not quite straight up. It's a lot of switchbacks, but it is really steep. There's a little bit of rock climbing. There's very little shade, but the views up here are so gorgeous. I mean, as you can see behind us, we're at like the top or above the mountain range behind us. Big hike today. It's almost 7 a.m. and we're getting ready to hit the trail for Guadalupe Peak at Guadalupe Mountain National Park. It's the highest peak in Texas, so we're going to go join the throngs of other people who apparently got up way earlier than we did this morning <laughs> because we heard cars at 5 a.m. ready to go, and we're just not that early of risers. But they told us to hit the trail by 7, so we're going to be on the trail by 7. It's going to be an all-day hike, and we're looking forward to it. We did camp here at the RV section of the camping. There's a tent loop and then there's a parking lot where you can dry camp and we did that so that was nice. So we were up at, I don't know, 5, 5.15 listening to people arrive. Yeah, because the parking lot for the trailhead is basically also the parking lot for the RVs. So it, we heard them all and we said, well, I guess we might as well get up and get ready too. But, you know, we took our time because we didn't want to wear ourselves out before we actually got on the trail. Yeah. It's going to be 87, close to 90 degrees today. Um, up on the peak, maybe a little windy, but we'll find out when we get there. Let's, uh, let's go for a hike. Two trails start out here for Guadalupe Peak at the bottom. One is hikers only, one is hikers and horses. The Hikers and Horses Trail is known as the Stock Trail. Apparently it's not as steep, but it, I've also read that it adds about a mile in each direction. So it's two miles longer. And this is already gonna be a pretty long hike. Um, but the trick about taking the Hiker Only Trail is it is a 3,000 foot elevation gain over about four miles. So you can either go short and steep or not as steep and a little longer. It's your choice. Have we chosen wisely? Uh, probably not, but we're doing it anyway, because, well, that's what we do. She'll be coming round the mountain when she comes. This is not a music channel. Oh, sorry. Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to be a long mountain coming around and around and around. Yeah. This is more like and a do, 99 I, bottles of beer trail. I don't have six white horses, which I could really use right now. <laughs> what were you saying? That bridge seemed a lot sturdier when you were on it than when you're looking back at it? Yeah, maybe don't look back at it because there's nothing underneath it. <laughs> sure they knew what they were doing when they built it. It works. Well, we can see the top. The bear went over the mountain. <laughs> the bear went over the mountain to see what he could see. And we can see a lot from up here. <laughs> Still not a music channel. We'll stick to beautiful scenery. Guess what? That's the top. We made it. We made it to the top of Guadalupe Peak. This is the highest point in Texas, and you said it didn't. It wasn't really straight up the whole way, but I mean, it is a three thousand foot elevation gain in just over four miles. So it, there's a little spot where it's not as steep, but it never really levels out. <laughs> No, the first mile is the worst. Then it gets a little better. I was tracking it kind of on my heart monitor and I was in like the 160, 170 range for the first mile and then in like the 120s, 130s for the rest of it. So definitely got a little easier. But we also took lots of breaks because it's so gorgeous. Every time you turn around a corner and get to the other side of the mountain and then go back to the other side and you get higher, you want to take breaks just so the view, you get the view, if nothing else. It is a strenuous hike. It's a tough one, but boy, if you can make it, this is a view of Texas you are not gonna get from anywhere else, I suppose, unless you're on a plane. <laughs> Maybe, but doing it yourself, it's well worth it. Uh, 
we're gonna go grab lunch now because we're hungry and we need some put some calories back in us so we're gonna go enjoy the view from up here hang out for a little while and then make the four mile hike back down the mountain yeah that's the other half of this slog that has to be done yet <laughs> This is what a weary traveler looks like. Big steps for little legs. These are very big steps. I thought they were bad going up, but they're worse coming down. And at the end of eight miles, when your legs are already tired and they're shaky, and the van doesn't seem to be getting any closer. It is, actually. We're not that far oh, now. It. It's like right there. Okay, we're almost there. The last time you heard from us, we had seen the van, and we were this close to getting back. And, well, we made it. We made it back, all the way back to the campsite, under our own power, so that's a good day of hiking. Yeah, any day you can make it back of your own power is a good day. Although, I really would have liked to have a horse, but, you know, apparently there were none to be found. Yeah. Guadalupe Peak Trail was really interesting. It was amazing for the views. Uh, parts of it tried to kick our butt, but I think we did pretty well. They're not kidding. I mean, it's a strenuous trail, both up and down, but it's it's a lot of switchbacks. And they go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth for four miles up and then obviously for four miles down. And it's a lot of switchbacks. And it's a lot of, it's a lot of leg day. It's And going down, I think, is a little worse because not only do you have like the rocks and slippery stuff, but you're just, your joints, your knees, your ankles, yeah, everything, your toes. Uh, that's, that's a lot of work. The rock there. I, I thought the trail was wider. I was shooting Jesse coming down that because we were going to comment later that on mile four, coming back down, it's actually more technical than going up because of the rocks and you got to watch your step. And as I turn around and get footage of her, I managed to trip and fall, which is the fun little video blooper that we have. So pay attention. Each mile is a little different. They, from what I've read, and I believe it now, I think they said like the first thousand feet elevation changes it is within the first mile and you can tell i mean that is a pretty steep first mile and then it's funny because i kept telling you the first mile is the steepest and then miles two and three level out and then mile four gets steep again and then i remembered later they never really said it leveled out it just says it's not as steep, steep. Yeah, there was no leveling on level on miles two and three it's not as steep but it never really levels out you're leveling you'd have like 25 yards of level and you'd be like oh and then you turn another switch back and you just keep climbing. It, yeah. And then mile four, it gets steeper again. I don't think it's as steep as mile one, but it's more technical. There's a lot of rock scramble and stuff up there. I mean, you're climbing a mountain. So as you get towards the peak of a mountain, there's going to be a lot more rocks. Yeah, um, they quit making more. It, there was less uh, trail. Yeah. Like less designated trail and more rock scramble. Yes. It's not like you're needing gloves or equipment or anything like that it's just but watch your footing i mean and good tread i mean people were doing it in tennis shoes but there were some slick spots and some gravelly parts that i'm so glad that we had our good hikers because you're gonna need all of that grip well you mentioned coming back down that's no joke either and you know coming backwards like mile four is really technical because of all those rocks and, and coming back down those rocks and then mile one again when you get down to where it's the the steeper elevation it's pretty loose uh and by then your legs are tired and wobbly and you're tripping over yourself anyway and so yeah um yeah it was it was strenuous for sure you mentioned also the right footwear uh let's not forget this is texas it gets hot so you know, good headwear, sunscreen, a lot of water. A lot of water. This is a trail where they say a gallon a person, and they're not really kidding. And usually sometimes we even are like, hey, you don't need that much water. But I think we both went um, through three liters of water each. And it wasn't even that, that hot today. I mean, it was high 80s, so it was pretty hot. And they tell you, if you have run out or if you are halfway through your water, 
you need to turn around at whatever point that is when you once you are halfway through your water turn around and we encountered a number of people who were turning around long before they had reached the peak because they were out of water already yeah we you know we did encounter one guy on our way down he had stopped for a break and he was trying to decide if he should continue or not because he said i've used half my water and, and should i continue or not and at that point he was what two switchbacks from the top yeah he and was maybe 10 like 10 minutes so we told him he could do it but if we'd met him any further down i would have told him to turn around uh you know you just have to use good common sense and it's it's not only the heat that gets you here but also you are hiking at elevation and especially in texas not everybody's used to hiking at you know six seven eight thousand feet and you do feel it if you're not used to it it can make a difference on how much oxygen your body has available and that's why you drink more water because it has oxygen in it and you feel better afterwards once you reach the top of guadalupe peak the views are just amazing it's just a, a kind of a surreal experience to be that far up and you've got the Guadalupe mountain range on one side of you, you've got the oil fields on one side, you've got kind of like farmers fields and crops on one side. It's just stupendous you're looking, being up there. You're looking down on El Capitan. Yes. The, the, the big landmark that they used to use when they were, you know, the pioneers were trying to find their way across the... Uh, the and the gold the, rush and yeah, everything. And and you yeah. could see it for miles and miles and here it is, we're above it, so... That was pretty impressive. That was cool. I didn't realize how far above it we were going to be, actually, because from the ground, you can kind of see it and you think, oh, they're pretty much right there. But no, you are well above El Capitan mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or Michigan, as we <laughs> yeah. discovered. We never realized at the right angle, El Capitan looks like the state of Michigan. So uh, who knew? Who knew? Um, yeah, but it was no, you're right. It was absolutely gorgeous up there. I would say if you don't feel like you can make it all the way. To, well, first of all, if you can make it all the way to the top, once you get there, take your time, pack a lunch, enjoy the views, enjoy your time up there. If you cannot make it all the way, if you don't think you can make it, don't discount the trail entirely. There are plenty of views along the way uh, that, that you can see some really pretty things as well. We spent a good hour at the peak once we got up there because, well, if we'd hiked four miles and four hours up there, we were going to enjoy it. Uh, but we had taken some snacks and a lunch and all sorts of things. And so we spent a good hour just sitting up there and enjoying the views. It does get windy at the top, though. And so even on a hot day like this, that wind comes across and it can be a little cold. So we had grabbed long sleeve shirts and our windbreaker. And so I put that on and you put your long sleeve sun shirt on. Just to have an extra layer because it is a it does get a little chilly up there. So depending on what time of year you're coming, they do say bring an actual jacket or even a winter hat if you're coming, you know, earlier in the year when it's colder. Uh, but just be aware of that and that, you know, if you have a hat, make sure it's tied on or well snug because otherwise that wind's going to whip across and make sure all your stuff, your lunch and everything isn't going to go flying but otherwise it was it was nice just to sit up there and relax and enjoy the scenery and you can walk it's not just like a peak it's it's a it's quite a big mountain top when you get up there so there were a lot of people and there is a monument up there the monument is not about hiking to the peak it's commemorating the the butterfield the butterfield overland mail route and it was put there by american airlines so it doesn't really make any sense whatsoever, but there's like this metal triangular pyramid statue at the top. So everybody, of course, gets their picture taken with it, uh, which now it sort of signifies, hey, you reached the top of Guadalupe Peak, which in reality has nothing to do with hiking the peak. <laughs> I'm really glad we did it. Uh, Guadalupe Peak was not on our list. We weren't going to do it. And then people found we were going to be in the area. A couple different people talked to you and to me and said, you could do it in a day. You guys don't have to go up and camp overnight like some people do because we don't backpack uh, in that way. But they said, make it a day hike. And I'm really glad they suggested that. And I'm really glad we did the trail. Well, and you say we weren't planning to do Guadalupe Peak. Guadalupe because we we were planning to do Guadalupe Mountains National Park like we had fully intended to come here but there are a lot of other trails here and hiking to the tallest peak in Texas was not really on our bucket list um, but after yeah after we talked to a number of people we decided it better be and I'm so glad we did it <laughs> day two at Guadalupe Mountains National Park we are going to attempt another trail today we did Guadalupe Peak yesterday which took a bit out of us that was a really long, really long day. Today we're going to try Devil's Hall, which is about four and a quarter miles round trip. 
which is half of what we did yesterday. But there's bouldering. There's bouldering and there's a steep, rocky staircase to climb. It looks really cool. We're going to push through as far as we can. We'll see how we do. Um, the, the other problem is the trailhead parking lot is closed today, actually for a few days, because they're having to do well repairs and have to tear up the parking lot. So we had to park at the visitor center. So just so you know, even if the trailhead parking lot is full at times and you have to park at the visitor center, that's another half mile up to the trailhead yeah. and a half mile back. So it adds a mile, but it is what it is. We'll see what we can do. So the devil may have gone down to Georgia, but he didn't stay there. He came here to Texas, where it's a lot hotter, more his kind of weather, and he built Devil's Hall, which we're standing in, and that we hiked to this morning. It was what, a little over two miles by the time we got here. It was, I would say it's a strenuous hike, but it a lot of bouldering, but uh, it was totally worth it. It was a lot of fun. It was so different from our straight up 3,000 foot hike yesterday. This was relatively flat, but yeah, a lot of bouldering. So just, it was just more, not more fun, but a different kind of fun today. There's a uh, part of it where you're just basically going down the wash and there's just boulders and debris everywhere. And they say, just kind of, you know, go around a boulder if you need to, or if you can go up and over the boulders. And there's times you don't have a choice. You have to climb up and over the boulders. And that's, that's when it's a lot of fun. And then when you get almost to the devil's hall, there's I don't know, the natural staircase? Is that what they call it? Yeah, it's, it's where the wa it's the waterfall, essentially, and it's cutting down through the rock, but there's no water right now. So that was interesting. It can be slippery at times, he said, so you got to be careful, take your time. Um, but yeah, that was a lot of fun climbing that. And then you keep going and you end up at Devil's Hall. And then just beyond here, the wash continues. It's really just some more boulders and wash and then a sign that says it's closed. <laughs> yeah, Uh Bring gloves. You're going to want gloves on this one because of all the bouldering. Everything is like super dusty. And I mean, the rock, is, you know, it's like limestone and sandstone. And so you're going to want gloves and pants or something that you don't mind getting dirty because you're probably going to be scooting your butt over a couple of times. And, you know, a shorts or pants doesn't really matter out here. It's more weather appropriate, really. I like having the gloves because when you reach up to do something when you're bouldering, you don't have to worry about your grip quite so much or that you're going to grab something that's going to hurt. So I just, you know, I just prefer to do it that way. But yeah, I found those are, are really helpful. But, and as always, plenty of water, not a lot of shade on the trail. There's a few spots. Um, Here in Devil's Hall, there is, and that's fine, but. Shaded and a nice cool breeze. It was a great spot to have lunch. Devil's Hall was a great hike. Uh, we just wrapped it and ended up back here at the parking lot. It got hot the second half. We started in the morning when the sun was still sort of behind the mountain, but as soon as it got over the canyon and shone right down in the middle at that, you know, noon hour, it got hot. So sun protection, sunscreen, hat, all the things, all the water. Um, but that was a really fun hike. I really enjoyed rock scrambling over, you know, all those boulders in the wash. Well, and going up the boulders and coming down the boulders is a completely different hike. <laughs> yeah, oh yes, it was. So it was different paths and it was sort of a choose your own adventure trail there for a while through the wash, but that's what makes it a lot of fun. Despite the fact that Guadalupe Mountains National Park has a ton of trails, we only did just the two, the Devil's Hall and the Guadalupe Peak, because both of them are strenuous and they take a lot out of you. And we are exhausted after two days of this. So if you come here, Figure out how much time you have, what your abilities are. There's everything from the Smith Springs Trail, which is a two, two and a half mile loop. It takes you to a really pretty waterfall. It's like the only real water is here in the park. Uh, but it is a little bit, it is a moderate trail. I mean, it's not easy by any means. And the first little section of it is paved and is wheelchair accessible to the Manzanita Spring. Uh, but if you want to go all the way around the loop, but that's going to be a little bit of a hike. But we actually, we did this. I see that we yeah. did three trails, didn't we? I kept waiting to jump in to say we did three, not two. But they yeah, I won credit for doing that trail because we thought it was going to be more of sort of a nature walk yeah. and once you get out into it a little bit further it's more of a hike it uh, was but it was worth it Smith spring was neat to see i totally forgot we did that because we did that friday night when we arrived before we did anything else thinking it was going to be an easy nature hike right. oops <laughs> but also at that i guess at that trailhead is the smith family residence and oh it's the free holy ranch Okay. What you yeah. want to look for, yes, yeah, called the Frijoli Ranch, uh, nicknamed that by the, the people who were there in, in the area because of all the beans they ate. So Is that what it was? Yeah, because Frijoles is beans. I never actually in read Spanish. anything about why yeah. it was named <laughs> that. I was but... that. So you can get to it through, the, it's the Frijoles Ranch Road is what you're looking for, and you take that back, and then you can take the little hike in. But yeah, that was fun. But the, but the residence there was where I was going with this was, that's where they lived. They um, had a school there that served eight kids. They 
grew vegetables. They basically collected the water from the spring, got into a spring house and then um, a tank house, and they were able then to keep their fruits and vegetables cold. They'd load them up on a wagon and drive 60 miles overnight to the nearest town where they then sell them the next day, come back and do that all over again. So man, think about having to on your wagon go like 60 miles all night just to get to your farmer's market in the morning. Goodness. Yeah, and covering it with um, wet towels, they said, so that the produce wasn't covered in dust by the time oh, gosh. at the what, market. What what a living, though. Man, That they were pretty hardy folk out here. There are a lot of different options here at Guadalupe Mountains in terms of the trails you want to take, the distance, the type, that kind of thing. There's different ways to camp here. There's uh, in the trailhead parking lot, there's RV spaces. It's really just a parking lot, but hey, it works. Uh, and then there's also a tent so that you can tent and then there is backcountry permits available so you can hike up the mountain and carry your tent with you you're up for it <laughs> i know people who have done that they said it was a wonderful experience whether that you go through mckittrick canyon or you hike to the top of guadalupe and then you're there for the sunrise all things that sound lovely not for us we'll stick to our day hikes you know they're good <laughs> But there's a lot going on here. There's lots of things that you can do depending on your adventure level and, and your experience level and what you want to accomplish and what you want to see. But there's plenty to see here. I really liked it. I'm glad we had this on our list as one of the national parks to make sure we got to. Uh, one of two in Texas, Big Bend and Guadalupe Mountains National Park. And we were really close to Carlsbad, Carlsbad Caverns National Park. Even though that's in New Mexico, it's only 20 miles up the road. So if you're coming to this area, you can kind of hit all of them, all of, you know, it's your three hours to Big Bend, your 20 minutes to Carlsbad. So you can knock off three national parks in not too far of an area here. So it's a great area to explore. Get out here if you can. In the meantime, keep on trekking. And we'll see you out there. We are at the tip top of Texas. It has been one of our tougher hikes, but it was worth it. Whoa, <laughs> what was that? that was a bird. <laughs> okay, we'll do another take, but <laughs> that was crazy fast bird. Because, well, both of them are quite strenuous and take a lot out of you, and we are exhausted. What is this bug flying around my face? <laughs> the bugs are bigger in Texas. All right, we're going to 